Hello folks, Tim Oscar here from Steinbeck Games. Now today's tutorial video is a very simple volumetric light effect uh, that I made recently. Uh, so typically what happens when you want to create a volumetric light like these ones I've got in this test scene here is you'd build some sort of mesh um, uh, and you'd give it a semi-transparent uh, material. Uh, so what, all I've done here is I've used ProBuilder to follow the light path um, of the light coming through this skylight falling on the floor here. So this is just a sort of stretched box um, aligned with the floor and the skylight here. And I've just attached a standard sort of lightweight render pipeline unlit material onto this. And if I bring up the, um, uh, the color picker here and change the alpha, you can see that that just changes how strong the, uh, the light um, shaft is. Uh, the other thing you obviously have to do is to make sure that you select transparent for this, otherwise it becomes uh, completely opaque uh, like that. So as long as you've got transparent selected, you can get this uh, sort of very basic, very easy uh, volumetric light. However, the problem is that um, if you go in, if I go into play mode here, as you um, as the camera gets closer to the uh, to the light shaft, um, because the um, the material is a very simple one, all that's going to happen is that when you when the camera gets within the um, uh, passes through the mesh, the edges of the mesh start to clip through the camera and you end up with this weird horrible effect like that. So what I decided to do was to um, write my own custom shader to make a more subtle effect uh, which I've given to these other um, light shafts here such that when you're walking closer to it it gradually fades away so you don't get that horrible transition. Very simple effect, um, not complicated at all, very easy to do. So I'll show you really quickly how I did that. Um, so what you do is you start with um, the create menu, you go up to shader, you come down to unlit graph and you click unlit graph and that's what, I, that's what I've done here and I've created this um, what I've called light shaft graph here and I'll bring that over onto my main screen because I've got it prepared already here. Uh, so when you've got your unlit uh, master node, first thing you need to do is select the little cog here and make sure that the surface type is transparent in exactly the same way we did for the uh, the other um, material. Uh, now if you were just trying to reproduce the unlit material you could just take a color, all I've done is I've created a property up here called color, um, you can use the U or otherwise depending on your preference and um, drop that in and split it so that I can then take the alpha and in fact all you do is, uh, is you'd plug the alpha directly in here and the color goes into the color uh, node here and that's effectively these three nodes are all you need to reproduce that unlit uh, transparent um, uh, material from before. However, uh, in order to get the, the effect where the um, material fades away as you get closer to it, you're going to need two things. Uh, firstly, you need the position of the camera. So you just drop, uh, there's a camera node, you can drop that in here and then just take the position and take the difference between that position and the position of the pixel of interest in your uh, in your mesh. So you need to select uh, world position, take the distance between those using the distance node, and then what I've got is two extra parameters that define how that uh, the fading happens based on that distance. So as the camera gets closer, you want the um, the alpha to gradually fade from whatever your original alpha was uh, down to zero. So I've defined two properties here, the minimum distance and the maximum distance. So the fading starts to happen when the camera gets within seven meters in this particular instance and um, is, becomes fully transparent by the time you get to two meters away from, from the mesh. Uh, so I've, in order to do that, you take an inverse lerp between the minimum distance and the maximum distance um, with the distance that your camera uh, is from, uh, from that uh, pixel. Then the output of that you need to clamp it between 0 and 1 because effectively what you've created is a ramp that uh, that goes from uh, fully, uh, fully well, not necessarily opaque, but whatever your default um, uh, alpha is, then it drops down to 0 and then it's 0 from there on. So you, wanna, you want this range, if you imagine that little ramp there like that, um, you want to clamp that between 0 and 1 so that then you can multiply it by the original alpha of your, from your color picker. So that then gives you your um, faded alpha, your reduced alpha, which you then just stick into the alpha node here. Very, very simple. Um, I'll just zoom out so you can get a better view of the full uh, network there. Uh, as simple as can be. You save that down, 
And what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually um, bump up the effect here so that you can really see uh, what's going on. So I'll take my light shaft material. Um, now I've actually set the maximum distance to three and the minimum distance to one here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to really pump up the uh, um, the opacity for this particular material. And if I go back into play mode, you should see the effect more um, more strongly. Okay, so here we go. As I get closer to the the mesh, you can see it fading away and coming back. Okay, let's go to this one. If I show you the edge on one, you can see the pixels closest to us, so that corner of the mesh here, is start, starting to fade away earlier than the mesh towards the edge. So there you go, like that. So, like I say, very straightforward. Um, there's not, not much to it. Um, if you find this useful, um, so feel free to subscribe, and uh, I'll have another tutorial video for you as and when I can be bothered to, uh, to record one. Thanks for watching.